you know, little things mean a lot, and that includes even little increases in uh, TNT, high sensitivity TNT, I might add. We're going to talk a little bit today about the findings of a new paper, and I'd like to introduce you to Ola Hammerstein, uh, MD, PhD, who's an associate professor at Gothenburg, Sweden, at the University of Gothenburg. Now, this paper is coming up in Jack, and I was fascinated when I looked at it because these high sensitivity uh, markers, it, it kind of scares some of the doctors because they are so high sensitive, highly sensitive. What did you find? Well, uh, the start of this uh, study uh, was a few years back uh, when we tried to define what's the lowest uh, level of troponin that you can find in a patient that actually ended up with a myocardial infarction diagnosis in our hospital. And in the, doing so, we also wanted to know what's the lowest change that you could see in those patients. And uh, to our surprise, we found that uh, the lowest change that you can find was zero, uh, an absolutely stable elevation. And uh, so we ended up doing this uh, more thorough study on these patients particularly. And our finding is that um, up to 25% of the patients with non-ST uh, elevation myocardial infarction have stable troponin levels during the first six hours. And we think this is because many of those patients come to the hospital late in the infarction process when you only see the troponin tail that tend to be relatively stable. Uh, and we also have done some uh, attempts to look at the long-term troponin change in a, a sub-study of those patients. That we, uh, and we found that if you take a troponin a few weeks later, uh, they always have a dramatic change uh, in, in troponin. So our suggestion is that maybe in those cases when you have a, just a slight elevation and the elevation is stable and you have low suspicion that you can just make sure that this was not the myocardial infarction by taking the patient back and taking a new troponin a, few, a week later or something. And if you do see a frank change, then you might uh, reevaluate that exclusion. So clinically speaking, it's kind of a wait and then test again? Well, this is early stages. I mean, this is a right. suggestion from, from our part, uh, because what we know that we bring a br big problem into the clini clinical scenario, where you're trying to use the stable troponin as a quick rule out. Uh, and in, in the face of these high sensitivity troponin assays that now give a lot of false positives, uh, at least in Sweden, uh, we need to have some, another trick uh, to not admit too many patients. Uh, well, that's a major issue in our country, too. I mean, we're trying to save money, and we want to f know which patients can be dis discharged from the ER and which ones have to be admitted. Yeah, so uh, we don't have a perfect answer to this, but at least uh, what we think is that uh, if, you, if, you, if you do exclude based on a, a stable, uh, m moderate elevation, that it should be rechecked a few weeks, weeks later. And we're doing a study now to see how often it, it occurs that the stable elevations in the hospital is actually uh, becoming a large change if you take a sample uh, a week or two later. So if you see that change and the patient is back, you can now say you actually may have had a small myocardial infarction and so we're going to be a little bit more aggressive in how we treat? Well, the problem is that troponin uh, doesn't tell you uh, the reason for myocardial death. Uh, it only tells you that you had prob Somebody. probably some kind of necrotic event. So the, we, we can't um, be sure that this was actually might call infarction, but it means that you should uh, look into this patient even more. Um, I know that many people think that it doesn't matter that an elevated troponin, uh, no matter what underlying cause, is, uh, is a risk factor, and we should take care of those patients. The problem is, is that we don't know really how to do that care uh, to make sure that those patients with elevated troponins uh, will get a better prognosis. But we know how we will do that in patients that have myocardial infarction. So that if we take the long-term troponin and find that the long-term troponin was uh, indicated that there was a myocardial infarction in the hospital, then you might reevaluate uh, how to treat that patient. Maybe you, that treat patients should have, have antiplatelet uh, treatment and so forth. But I must say that this is early days. Right. This is just a suggestion on our part, trying to uh, uh, 
give a little bit of help back to the problem that we have uh, uh, exposed. Well, the paper is coming up in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, and at the end of this you will see the citation for Cardiosource World News. I'm Rick McGuire.